Right, hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's video, and today we are going to be taking a look at this PlayStation 4, and it's a 1200 series, and this is a subject which has been asked about on untold occasions by loads of you, and that is disc feed, or lack of it, on the SAC001 Vision motherboards. Now today we are having a slight change in equipment, today we are recording these outside shots with our new uh, Panasonic 4K video camera. I've not got it recording in 4K at the moment, it's just on 1080p. Uh, frankly I think my knackered old laptop would frankly fall over fate and die if I tried encoding 4K on it. But um, you know, for now, this is uh, how it looks, so hopefully in this crappy low light in here it's going to be a lot better than the old Vernie Mars camera on my smartphone, because although it's a decent phone, at a decent price, the camera on it, it's pretty shit. Um, so, anyway. Let's have a look at this one then. So, why are we having a look at this one when we've already got a disc feed issue video on the site? Well, yes, we have already got one of those on the channel, but it's for the older SAA SAB revision boards. And although I'm sure that largely the thing is going to be similar, uh, on this particular instance it may not be so... Uh, cut and dry because of course there are some internal changes inside this revision PlayStation which makes diagnosing that issue a fair old bit harder and of course for those of you who don't know um, the biggest change of all is that these SAC revision motherboards don't actually have a dedicated BD-ROM drive logic board as the older machines would so if you take the, the disk drive out of one of these machines you won't find a logic board on it because they don't exist instead they're integrated onto the actual main board of the console now that's good in a way because it means we can't uh, get mismatched drive boards anymore so for those of you who've come across them and they're quite annoying the uh, CE35888-2 errors because you've mismatched the logic board or you've bought a machine where the you know some git swapped the drive out and then put their old drive in there and then sold the old machine as faulty the only way around that is massive surgery so it's an APU syscon nor transplant along with a matching BD ROM board and that's just a pain in the arse so you know it's good in a way and it would appear that Sony themselves got sick of fixing them because of course more often than not it was down to a mismatch logic board but there were you know several instances well lots of instances of, to be honest with you of machines with faulty logic boards actually giving that error where the things were uh, you know warranty sealed and you know allowing for fake warranty seals because they do exist and there's a video on that on the channel as well and I'll link that down below so you can see those if if I think on um, but allowing for that you know a faulty logic board also causes this error and of course we can't get that anymore well we can get a faulty logic board section of the board of course but we can't no longer get the biggest cause of it which was mismatched logic boards so it would appear that Sony themselves got sick of fixing them which is cool because it's a stupid error. But, that aside, this PlayStation 4 here has no disk feed. And although, like I said, we now have no longer have any logic board, but I'm pretty sure that we'll be able to deduce this fairly straightforwardly without too much trouble. And why do I say that? Because I think we can learn a lot about the present by looking to the past. And we've no schematics for this. Um, as far as I know, this information isn't anywhere else on the net. Um, I'm, you know, I, I, I peruse the usual places. Um, and I, as far as I'm aware, haven't seen it anywhere. So we'll see if we can deduce it on here and hopefully help a few, you know, good of you, uh, few good old people out here. So we will take this apart. Now, obviously, the biggest bugbear of this is the fact that at least before, um, what we could do was look at the BD-ROM drive uh, logic board and actually look at the fuses and things like that. We could just pop the drive out to look at that. Of course, there's no dedicated logic board on the drive anymore, which means we have to get the entire logic board, the entire main board, out of this console before we can even begin to have a look, which is a pain. You know, it's no, it's no longer a quick fix if it's a fuse, but, um, ah, well, you know. <laughs> I'll take a, I'll take a, a little bit of extra disassembly work just to make sure that nobody's bloody mismatched the drive board on me. So you know it's a necessary evil in my opinion. But we'll take it out, we'll have a look, and then we'll go into a bit more detail and we'll explain what I mean by looking at the, by learning about the present by looking to the past. So we'll get this disassembled, get it on the table, and we'll take another look. So uh, jump cut, and I'll see you shortly. 
Right, okay then ladies and gentlemen, so we have our PlayStation 4 motherboard out of our console. And we're going to take a look at it now and just see what the crack is. So, as you can see there, this is the board itself. So this is the top there, the front's where the USBs are, right to the back where the I.O. ports are. This is the APU here, as you know, you would come to know and love. This is the new Panasonic encoder I see. Southbridge, uh, secondary RAM. Uh, the actual system RAM is, you know, the number of cubes is halved, so in fact it's all double density, and over the other side. So we now just have the 8 RAM blocks as opposed to 16. And uh, yeah, and of course we have this little sort of divide over here. Now this little divide is actually quite useful because that sort of denotes where the biggest part of our BD-ROM drive logic actually resides. So anything inside here is largely logic board related. At least it is on the other side. So this here is in fact our BD-ROM drive logic board. So this section here is the bit that we are interested in. So the connectors actually sit top side. So for those of you who've been inside one of these consoles will in fact know that you know the connectors you've got three ribbons you've got this ribbon here this ribbon here and this ribbon here. So remember how we were saying before you can learn about the present by looking to the past. If we get this old drive board here. So this is in fact a BDP-010 revision PlayStation 4 logic board from an SAA SAB revision motherboard. So what we were saying there about learning about the present by looking to the past. Well if we take a look we have three connectors on this board. We have a small connector here. That small connector has, let's just count it, I think it's got eight pins on it. One, two, three, four, it is indeed eight pins. That's this one here, top left. We have this here, which is the actual uh, board I.O. signal. So this sends data to and picks it up from the main board. This is the laser optical ribbon. And this here is uh, the <coughs> drive motor and sort of control cable just here. And the one that we actually get our drive board and eject signals to and from is actually this one here on the bottom side. That's your NSAS chip there that controls, uh, that, that's the actual chip responsible for marrying this board to its uh, its donor machine. And that's about it really, quite a, a simple enough thing. So what can we learn about the present by looking at this old board? Well, if we take a look at the connectors, all looks familiar. Well, we have this big old long connector here. Looks a bit like this one, don't you think? So that one there actually leads across to our laser ribbon. So in fact, that's this one. So that one and that long connector match up. We have this small 8-pin connector here. There's four pins on both sides. Looks very similar to this 8-pin connector here, so we can probably assume that that's part of the circuit is effectively done through this port here. And then we've got this uh, this little connector here, this one is, is it 10? 1, 2, 3, 4... Eyes are going, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 pin connector actually. And we've got 9 pins on this white connector here, so it's probably safe to say that the uh, functions controlled through this connector are the same as the ones controlled through this connector. So we have our three, um, you know, connectors there, but we are of course missing two. We're missing this one, which is our I/O ribbon, which sends data to and from the motherboard from this board, and we're also missing dropping things. We're also missing the one on the bottom of course which is where our signal and eject functions come from and of course on the SAA and SAB boards as we've seen on the other video the uh, circuit on the underside of the main board directly underneath the uh, opposing connector of course is responsible for our logic board activity. Now then, where are those on here? They're not are they? 
You can't see them on there. That's because they don't exist. Why don't they exist? Because, of course, we have no need to send data from this board to the main board. Because, of course, there is no separate board. It's all on here. So, if there's no connector for it, i.e. there's no connector from this side to this side, how is it all handled? It's all handled by traces and tracks and vias and internal circuitry within the actual layers of the mainboard. So there's no cables as such that we can see, but there are connections going from this section of the board, or should I say the underside section, this section of the board, through internal pathways out into the rest of the board where it's actually going to be used and required. So. As we've seen, you know, the connectors have identical numbers of pins, so we can deduce that that part of the circuit is very similar. That's not the only thing that's very similar, and we'll get these boards underneath the microscope camera now, so we can go over the next bit, and this is the bit that we're going to test. Now, I didn't actually show it beforehand, but remember the old video, if you've watched it, where first of all we were trying to deduce whether the actual drive was dead, or whether the drive still had some functionality, but it wasn't working in the way that we intended it to work. And we did that, of course, by plugging the power in and attempting to insert a disk. Now, on that machine, we could insert the disk up to the machine with it powered off. The machine would detect the disk, and it, would, you know, it wouldn't attempt to feed, but it would power the machine on. Now, the fact that it would sense the disk is there meant that we had power to the drive, and it's very similar here. We did a very, very similar thing. We actually offered a disk up, to the drive in this machine when it was connected and the actual machine did sense that the disk was present and powered on but it didn't attempt to feed it. So we know we have a problem on our disk drive circuit on the board here or on the actual main board portion of the uh, of the circuit. But as I say because this has actually not got a separate logic board anymore the whole thing's sort of changed a little bit. But there are still similarities which we can use to deduce and sort of assimilate the issue on this board. And as I say, we'll go into the scope camera now and we'll explain what we mean in a bit more detail. Right, okay then, ladies and gentlemen. So, we have our old SAA SAB revision drive logic board out on our table. And we were saying, you know, we could learn things about the presence by looking to the past. And that is indeed the case here. So we've already seen how you can sort of tell or get a, a basic sort of grasp as to where the main functionality of the new SAC board is actually similar to the older board just by looking at the connectors and following the circuit back. So we've already seen, you know, that this sort this small connector here has the same number of pins. Uh, and it is actually responsible for sensors inside the drive to tell where the mechanism actually resides. We have this long connector here which links to our optical pickup, our laser unit. Now we've seen how this little 9 pin connector here has its equivalent on the new boards as well and that is responsible for controlling and sending motor functions of course from this BD77 uh, 63 EFV chip, uh, I forgot the bloody serial number of it there, um, you know, to and from to control the various drive motor functionality, at least when it's given the signals from the main board to actually do its stuff. And that's not the only thing. So, of course, if anybody has had a look at this, and you know, one of the big causes of lack of disk feed functionality is the fuses on these older boards. So let's have a look. So there's three fuses usually that are responsible for this. F201, F202 and F203. And those fuses are here. So if you look down the side of this BD7763 you can see that this is one. This R270 this one here is a fuse, this small SB marked component is a fuse, and this small I8, the IB component here, is marked as a fuse. So if we take a look now and read these off in continuity mode, we should be able to see, or at least hear, that these are in fact fuses and that they're hopefully intact. So if we just read the values of this one. Now I have no idea if this is a good board or not, it's from my pile of crap, so chances are this board is dead. But So there's a beep there. 0.8 ohms. There's a, hopefully going to be a beep here. 
0.5 ohms, good enough. Get enough for dancing. And then there's this one here. One ohm and a beep. So hopefully the, mic the, uh, the microphone on this pick that up. So those are the three fuses that mainly blow. So you'd measure that in continuity mode on your multimeter. And, you know, so some people call it beep mode, you know, and all that sort of stuff with the one bit beeps when you touch the two probes together. So when you do that, oop, when you do that even, and the thing beeps. So that's continuity mode. So you can test those fuses with a normal, with any old multimeter. Uh, and of course, if either of those don't beep, so if you put one probe either side of that, you know, on those two silver points, and it doesn't beep, that fuse is bad, you're going to have to change it. Same for that one, and same, of course, for this one. And hopefully that's going to fix your issue on the older boards. But a lot of the time, as we saw on the video that we have on the channel for the SAA, SAB boards, the actual issue was on the motherboard side of the, key, the circuit where the signals are actually generated and passed through to the drive board for this thing to do its business. So, you just take a look at those. So we've got this one here, this one here, and this one here. Okay, so we've got those three fuses. Remember what they look like. Take a look at that now. Okay. And then we're going to get our SAC revision motherboard across here with us. I just realised this might be a total pain in the arse, because... <laughs> these things here, these power prongs here, are going to sit the board up underneath the camera and it's all going to go out of focus and it's going to be a pain. So, this is the connectors that we have on our SAC board with our drive plugs in. Okay. Now then, you'll notice that we have... Okay, there's a 6 in front of it, but there's F6201. Okay, that's denoted. F6001 and F6002. So there's three fuses listed there. So where are they? Well, this is one of them. We'll call this F6201. This is one of them. We'll call F6001. So where's F6002? Because if you take a look here, I can't see it. I can't see it anywhere. Can you? Can you spy it? No. It's because it's on the other side. So take a look. Now then. What did we say earlier? We had the old... Bloody hell. Let's try and get you some focus on this. So this is the Renaissance IC. Big thing. <sighs> to adjust the tension on my scope camera. To tighten it up. Well, tension on my scope even. There we go. That looks a little bit happier. So. Renaissance IC. Okay. So that's the same thing as it was on the older boards. So that's on the new SAC board as you're looking at it. This is the one on the older board. Exactly the same. If you look to the left of it, that's the uh, BD7764 this time. That's the same motor controller I see as on the older board, which of course is the big long one there that we were looking at earlier. So, how do we know where uh, the other fuse is? Look at that. R330. Does that look familiar? That's because that's our other drive board fuse. So, what we're going to do is we're going to check and make sure that these fuses on our SAC board are good. Hopefully they are. Well, I say hopefully they are. If they're not, then it's a nice easy quick fix for me. If they're not, then we're going to have to go hunting. So. Multimeter, you can hopefully hear that beep. One ohm dropping, so that fuse is indeed intact. So we're back in continuity mode on the on the multimeter again, just in case anybody's wondering. 
So what about our fuses this side then? So we had this one here, remember? One coined F6001. Hopefully you can hear that. One ohm dropping. All good. And F6201. I think you can hear that. That's one ohm and dropping. So we've got continuity across all three of those fuses. And as you can see, you know, we've not done anything major there. We've got no schematics. We've got nothing really to go on aside from an old logic board. And already we've managed to deduce quite a lot about this circuit that's in common with the older stuff. So once you've got that familiarity, we can start to make some assumptions. So that's good in a way I suppose because all our fuses are intact we know our, our issue isn't going to be a fuse problem which <coughs> you know is pretty cool but the issue now is we need to know exactly where our issue is yeah that's the problem so now we have to find the portion of the circuit which is responsible for sending and receiving those commands and processing them through the drive board <coughs> so if we have a look at an older board Let's see if we can get some sort of idea as to where those signals come from, where they're generated. Now let's see if we can sort of have a half decent guess as to where this functionality is going to reside now. So I'm just trying to look through my pile of crap boards here. Okay. So, let's take a look at our older board. So, now then, the components are missing but it doesn't really matter for this particular way of looking at it. So we're not particularly interested in the components, but we're more interested as to where this signal comes from. So we can see here that, of course, this is a portion of the circuit where, you know, those various signals are controlled and sent. The, other, the connector for the drive is actually the opposite side of these vias. So the signal actually comes in from here. Okay, so you follow this trace all the way up, so it's on the outside of here, the outside of here, goes to this via. Okay, now I've actually scratched that via back on another machine, and it actually comes out around here and it then goes to this little chip here eventually which is our PCI Express SATA controller chip okay so that actually interfaces with the hard disk as well that's the hard disk connector so that's where that comes from so if that's where that comes from where the hell is it on here so where are we likely to find that okay then, so let's have a look at our SAC board then and here's the hard drive connector and if we follow the connections back, let's see where this goes to. Oh dear. <laughs> Southbridge. So, if we have a look at the older board, if we have a look at the older board, you can see that the same pathways from the back of the hard disk connector go down through that controller IC and then and then go to the south bridge. So it would appear that that circuit is now integrated into our south bridge, which is a pain in the arse, because hopefully that doesn't mean our south bridge has had it. Or at least partially had it, because that would be really bad. Oh dear, let's hope that's not the case. But anyway, that's where the signal emanates from. So it's fa probably fair to say that the signal therefore is going to come out of here similarly so if that's the case then let's see if we can find something similar on here which looks like it may vaguely resemble the old portion of the circuit so we're going to go around the board and see if we can find anything that looks particularly similar I am going to find another board okay so let's have another look at one of the older boards then if we think it's coming from our south bridge Let's take a look at one of our older boards and see that portion of the circuit. Now this one isn't completely intact but it's not far off. So, I 
Yeah, it's not completely intact, but it's not it's not it's not too far away. So the only difference here is that there is another one of these little packages down here on these three pads. Okay, but otherwise I think there's a couple of uh, resistors missing as well. Yeah, there is. there's a resistor missing here. But other than that, it's uh, it's pretty much intact. So we're looking for something similar there. So as I say, the, these six vias here are the opposite side of the connector, and so it was basically sat in between these two sets of vias on the opposite side of the board. So you know these various bits and pieces, these two ICs are usually what gives out and gives us our problems. So we need to find something similar that sort of associates with this connector. So of course from this connector uh, it goes across the cable to our BD-ROM drive but of course we no longer have that connection because it's all internal within the board. So let's take a look and see if we can find anything remotely similar which might give us a clue on our new board. So first of all I'm going to take a look on our on our board see if we can find anything that looks remotely suspicious so if we think it's coming from Southbridge chances are that there's going to be something similar kicking around there so this portion of the circuit here is the rear of the south bridge. So if we think there's a signal from the south bridge that controls that that's coming out somewhere, then it should be somewhere fairly close by here, you would imagine. Now on the face of it, I can't see an awful lot that it might be. I'm not convinced there's anything up there that's going to do it. Let's have a look on the other side of the board. So this is top side, of course. This is on the BD-ROM portion of the board if you like back side of our NSS IC these are of course the connectors optical cable drive sensors so I'm not too sure that's exactly what we're after so we're just looking for visual clues at the moment there doesn't seem to be an awful lot there. Okay, so let's have a wander out onto our actual mainboard. So that's our south bridge where we suspect that that functionality for signalling is actually held within. So there's these two. There's these two. There's also that big thing there, which is carried over from the previous board there's also another fuse there if you take a look there's two transistor packages there so what about those two then those look familiar don't they that one that one you got those two transistor packages resistors located around there. It's very close by to our south bridge. It's also very close in proximity to our main board. Oh, oh. Interesting, eh? So, what are we thinking? Is there a chance that this could be our new location for our eject mechanism? Maybe? Possibly. What are we thinking? Because this all looks very familiar to the top side of the old board, if I can show you what I mean. So that's where the old... this is the old board of course. This is where the drive signal logic connector resides. You can see it's off the back of that big thing there. So all you know, all this sort of thing looks familiar. I can't shake it. I can't. I can't help but think. Judging by this is the new board again, of course. I can't help but think that is something to do with our issues. I really can't. So F six two o two. There's actually a fuse again, which is this one here. Let's just check this one. Aha. We have a fuse blown. 
F6202. That's not a happy bunny. F6202. There's also F5001, which I presume is the little one marked T here. So that's happy. Ah, 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 ah. Now then. F6202. Like the old one, and remember F6, F6201 on the other side of the board? On the actual sort of drive logic board portion of, of the main board? Remember that one? Just got a 6 in front of it. 6202. I reckon this could be our smoking gun. Now then. So, could it indeed be possible that these two transistors sorry these two transistors here I, th I believe if I remember rightly from the previous video these ha happen to turn out to be MOSFETs um, but yeah I I think these could actually be the same components I think this section of the board is indeed the part we are looking for I think this is and again purely from deducing looking at the past to learn about the present I think this section of the board could indeed be the bit we're looking for I really do and that fuse there is definitely out so we are definitely going to end up replacing that so indeed could we have found our issue well I'm hoping so so first of all we're gonna to have to we're gonna definitely replace that fuse so looking at it indeed I think we're onto something here I think we are indeed looking at the same two FET packages and the same two transistor packages as we have on the bottom side of our previous board I think the signals themselves are definitely emanating from our south bridge now. We don't have a, a dedicated PCI Express SATA controller anymore. I think that's all embedded in the uh, in south bridge, which is CXD936GIC. Actually, there's quite a bit of that now as well, because there's no actual dedicated USB host controller. Because, of course, on the old boards as well, that used to have a GL3502, um, if I remember rightly. Uh, that's no longer present either, so if you have USB issues, it's probably down to a knackered south bridge. But yeah, like I said, you know, just looking at this, it does look very, very, very familiar. So, yeah, I think we may have found our problem. So, let's replace that fuse. Let's get rid of that fuse, and let's see if that has any bearing at all on our problem. So... I am going to put fume extraction on. So for those of you wondering where exactly where F202 is, this is the three connectors, or these are the three connectors even, where the drive plugs in and it's just up. So it's here. So it's just outside the boundary of the bit we determined our logic board if you like. So it makes sense it's close by. Which again just adds credence to the fact that these are the same components we're looking at. You threw me there for a moment. But uh, hopefully. Hopefully we've managed to learn something this afternoon because this isn't personally something I've looked at previously. This has all been completely deduced alive in front of your eyeballs. So that's some flux there. I've had a few people ask me what flux this is. This is uh, Amtec RMA223 TPF UV. That I'm using. So we're going to remove this fuse. So we're using the quick 861DW hot air station for this one. We are on 490 degrees C at 100 litres of airflow per minute. For those of you wondering. Okay, so let's get this fuse off. Well, I'm trying to do this sideways on the scope camera for you, so not ideal. I'm also having to come in at an angle because the scope camera is in the way means I can't get any sort of direct heat on it so this might take a little longer than usual but there we go so that's our duff fuse out of the way so I'm gonna pull one off a donor I do 
do have a scrap SAC board kicking around here somewhere. Although if I can't find it any. Any fuse will do really but if I've got one I may as well use it. Now then trying to find the bloody thing because I'm fairly sure I had hold of it the other day. For something. Here she be. It's as far as I can remember, this board had a blood. So hopefully, it's uh, fuses intact. So if we get rid of that board and we take a look at ours, it's been a bit sodomized this particular board, but never mind. So we'll just take a look at our fuse here. Okay, hopefully you can hear that on the uh, microphone. One omen dropping, so that fuse is good. So we'll take that. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. We'll get our board back in view for you. Well, I'm saying we will. If I've got enough bloody room on this desk, we will. Just about. Just going to remove the uh, the fuse from the donor. Okay. Yeah, not ideal having to try and do this sideways. I keep going on about ordering a kink nozzle for this thing so I can actually use it under the camera effectively. Have I done that yet? <laughs> Have I, hell. So, I keep insisting on torturing myself because. Well, it's fun, isn't it? Just having a bit more flux on there. Yeah, it doesn't really need it, to be honest. It's intact. It's placed in position. Probably not helping I'm going sideways on it to be honest with you. Okay. That'll do. That'll do. So, let's just make sure we haven't killed it from our bizarre angle we're having to work at. We are going hunting for another fuse. Hopefully not. Oh yeah. So one omen dropping, as you can hear there. Hopefully on the camera. Sorry, on the camera, on the uh, microphone. We have continuity across that fuse, which is cool. I'm going to get some IPA. Just give that a section of the board. Little bit of a scrub. Hopefully, we're done. And hopefully, we've all learned something today because, as I said, I haven't seen this anywhere else on the net. Uh, and it's not an issue I've seen personally on a 1200 up to now. So, hopefully, here we've, we've managed to learn something. Hopefully, this is going to work. Hopefully, this is indeed same part of the circuit, hopefully this is exactly the same as it was on the older boards. In fact, if it is, I'd be very interested to know if the old transistors and those FETs are actually the same. So I wonder if they'll work from, you know, an older SAASAB board. Maybe they will. Maybe that's an interesting uh, experiment for somebody to do if at some point they do have to replace those. That is if this turns out to work. It may not. 
who may be on a complete red herring. Uh, TZ Z809. Yeah, I think that's the same part number if I remember rightly. Z eight oh nine. It is. Those are the, those are the exact same. Uh, those are the exact same FETs. I'm pretty. I, I, I'm sure they were FETs. If I remember rightly, the data sheet is actually linked on the uh, S A A S A B video. So if I think on again, I'll link the data sheet again down below in the description. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure this is exactly the same portion of the circuit. I'm sure this is exactly what we're looking for. I'm feeling more and more confident about this the more I look at it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say this quietly now, but I think we may have learned something today. I've learned something today, so that's cool. So, let's then get this back in the machine, see if it works. Right, okay ladies and gentlemen, so we've partially reassembled our console. There it is in front of you. And that is the disk drive slot. So, what are we betting then? Have we fixed our issue, do we think? Well, I haven't tried this. I haven't tested it off camera, so you're seeing it live as I am. Hopefully, we found our issue. And if we have, I think we've learned something about this motherboard today, which is really quite cool. So, remember before what I told you, this thing, when you offered a disk up in the slot, would power the machine up, but it wouldn't feed the disk. So we were getting power to our sort of drive board, but um, we weren't actually getting the uh, the disk feed as desired. So let's try and feed this disk now. See what happens. Oh. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, you did see that. It did work, and indeed, if we go up. You can see on the screen there. We have the welcome back to PlayStation. I'm going to plug a controller into this console. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's fantastic. I think we can safely say we have learned something about the SAC001 board there today. I certainly have. And it just goes to show the point that I was proving, or attempting to prove when we started, that you can indeed learn a lot about the present by looking to the past. And indeed it will be interesting to see, I presume it's the S I think it is indeed the SAD001 in the Slims. It'll be interesting to see the similarities there as well when we find the start seeing them filtering through to independent repair. As you can see there, there is our disc FIFA 15. Let's attempt to somebody attempted to initialise this machine by the looks of things. Well there we go. <laughs> I'm chuffed to bits, that's fantastic. Okay, we've really learned something there. Well I have. Hopefully you have too. English, yeah, that's gonna go in nicely. Let's play. Beautiful. And as you can see there, we have our game back up and online. And everything is working absolutely fantastically well. Of course, this wouldn't be a complete test, would it, without me one smacking the camera everywhere. I do try to eject the disc. So, there she be. Let's try and eject this. Push the button down below. Have I got this plugged in? Probably not. Oh, I didn't did I? I didn't plug the bloody ribbon in the other side. So you can see the ribbon's plugged in there, but I haven't plugged it into the main but to the uh, drive board. Silly sod. Okay, never mind. I can go to the home screen, I can hit options and I can remove disk. There we go. So I haven't plugged the eject button in. Silly me. But no, it doesn't matter because we can see there that our disk does indeed feed. So it feeds, and of course, when I plug that eject ribbon in like an arse, it is going to eject there as well. That's annoyed me actually. I'll pop the bottom off. I, I won't cop out on you. I'll pop the bottom off and I will plug the ribbon in. And I will prove to you that that is indeed the reason why that's not working. I hate leaving things half-baked. 
you know, if anybody who sort of knows me watches these videos, you'll know I don't like leaving things half baked on this, on anything I do. To be honest with you, never mind. What I'm trying to show you and prove to you that what we've done actually works. So you can see there that this board is indeed happy as a piggy in what's it. So there we go. So it was indeed a case of just looking at what we, you know, what we know about the old boards and applying it to the new boards. You know, even just a visual sort of aid. You know, you can see there that we found the same effects. We found we found the same transistors. Uh, knowing about where those signals come from is how we kind of managed to deduce that that was a good chance that that portion of the board was indeed the bit we were looking for. So, we, we you know we knew that that section of the board previously controlled the eject function. We followed that back to the PCI Express controller, which we also followed to the hard disconnector. Uh, on the new board, we followed it from the hard disconnector to the south bridge, which meant that we didn't have any sort of secondary control them in the way, we knew that signal had to come from Southbridge, which kind of chopped our balls off a little bit. But when we actually followed, you know, the signal back through the other side of the board, we actually found, you know, the same sort of looking area. So we found that big I think it's a fuse. And we saw that, you know, is is the exact same portion of the circuit as is on the original boards by where the actual signal ribbon connector is. And of course there is where we found our, you know, a couple of transistors and a couple of FETs, which were the same part numbers incidentally. It's on the older boards, which gave us, you know, a bit more confidence. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop this out on camera. Hopefully you'll be able to see in a sec. When I plug this drive ribbon back in, yeah, you can see there. <laughs> right, okay, so we'll plug that back in. Okey coke. We've also got to put some screws back in this thing, obviously, but we can do that in a sec. So I just want to prove to you that that eject button will indeed work. Don't want you to think I'm lying to you. It's not something I'd ever do. I never, ever, ever fudge these videos. I never show you things. I never swap things that don't work. You know, it's just not. At the end of the day, we're trying to learn things on this channel. I'm learning things. I want you to learn things along with me. And what are we learning if we're switcherooing things and half baking things? We're not, are we? And we don't want that. So, we're all plugged back in. There we go. Disk feed is working beautifully. If we try and eject that now, fantastic. As you can see, that lovely stuff. So we feed, and we also eject. And that's it in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen. So, what did we learn today? Well, I actually learned quite a lot. As you can see on camera, you know, you followed it through with me. I've never actually followed this problem before. It's not something I've ever personally witnessed, but it is today something that we have indeed seen on camera. And the SAC board is indeed very, very similar to the older SAA, SAB revisions. So, what we've learned today is that by using your eyes and looking to the past, you can indeed learn a lot about the present and you can learn a lot about sort of later revision boards and circuits just by looking at their older counterparts and even visually just determining what's going on whether that be the same part numbers, the same parts, the same circuit layout you know tracing with multimeters you know to see where signals go to and come from and actually using that to look at the newer boards and just try and educate yourself a little bit about the ways they work and as you can see there we've successfully managed to do that today and we've got this uh, this console here which was failing to 
feed and eject this before now working beautifully and back in the land of the living so thank you very much for watching ladies and gentlemen i will see you on the next video of course feel free to hit me up on twitter uh, at yt andrew paul dm inbox is open to everybody if you want to send me a message on there feel free to do so you can send me a private message on youtube alternatively you can pop a comment down below in the comments and suggestions uh, all of which are all very much appreciated of course please remember to like and subscribe to the channel like the video all goes towards helping me out love you guys uh, as I say today I think we've hit 4600 subs by the time this video goes live probably got a few more hopefully um, yeah heading towards 5000 uh, I'm thinking about what to do for the 5000 sub vid um, I might do a little giveaway don't know see what we've got see what we've got kicking around I'm sure there won't be anything too spectacular but <laughs> <laughs> It'd be nice to try and give something back to some of you guys. So, thank you for watching. Uh, I've got three minutes worth of battery left on this camera, so I'm going to make this snappy. I've been Andy Paul. You've been fantastic. Today, we've all learned something, and I will see you on the next video, boys and girls. So, for me, ladies and gentlemen, it's bye bye for now. Many thanks for watching, then, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then why not check out these recommendations below? Also, please remember to comment, rate, and, of course, subscribe to the channel if you found this useful. We've plenty more content on there, and there's lots more to come.